today I want to talk about how you can use the form data object to parse your forms, to work with and gather up all the data that you have in a form. So instead of individually going to each one of the form elements when you want to bundle the data up and send it to the server, you can use the form data object and very quickly and easily do this. So I have this simple page. I've got a couple of text elements, an email element, a password, and a checkbox. So I want to take all this data and send it somewhere to get a we're going to say a JSON object coming back to us. So let's take a look at how we do this. I jump into my HTML here and I've got an input, like I said, type equals text for the first name and the last name, um, email, password, and then type checkbox at the very end. And then my button to submit the form. All of this is inside of the form element come back up here to the top. Here's my form element. It's got an ID, my form. That's how I'm going to reference the whole form object with everything inside of it. Now, I do want to mention one thing here. With the form data object, for this to work, you have to make sure that you have the name attribute inside your inputs. If you just have an ID, it looks like it works. You get no errors, no complaints. But when you look at the form data object, after you've gathered everything, it will actually be empty. None of the inputs will come through unless they have a name attribute. So ID works great for JavaScript. ID works great for CSS. But to work inside of the form data object, you have to have a name attribute. All right, let's scroll down and take a look at the script here. My start with my DOM content loaded event listener. I'm just going to add a submit listener onto my form. That's all this first part is doing. So with that done, we're going to call this function every time somebody clicks the submit button. Here it is. Now, EV prevent default, anytime you're going to work with JavaScript and you want to use JavaScript to handle your form and you don't want the page to just automatically reload, we need to add prevent default onto the event. This is going to stop the form from actually trying to go off and get that new page and reload the page and replace the current page. We don't want that. We want to be able to do things with the form data without losing what's already on the page, without losing our variables, without losing what the users typed. So very important step. Always put EV prevent default inside of here. Okay, ev.target, that is my form. So right here, this add event listener that we're adding to the form object. So ev.target, that is the form. All we have to do is create a new form data object. So we call the constructor method, form data, and we pass in our form object. Now, this variable here, fd, that is my form data object with everything from the form. Every input, select, checkbox, radio button, text area, everything that was in the form, as long as it had a name attribute, is now bundled up inside there. And the form data object is one of those things that you're allowed to send as the body when you submit data to the server. If I come down here a little bit, you can see I have a fetch request. So I'm going to be sending a fetch off to this URL right here. Now this is just my quick, simple little server here. Uh, this is included. The link to the code gist that's down in the description will include both these files. The server.js, all it's doing is listening for any request on port 3000, and it always sends back this same JSON object. That's all it does. So I'm making a request to localhost port 3000. I Down here in my console, you can see I said node server.js and it's running. So my server is running. I can make the requests from this web page to this server. We create a request object set to that URL. And then inside the properties, the initialization properties we're sending into this request, we're going to say body is this, FD. That is our form data object. So everything that was in the form that was on the page, as long as it had a name attribute, is now inside of there. You want to add other things that aren't in the form? We can do that too. We can use the append method. So I'm creating something called API key and I'm putting this string inside there as a value. If you had other data that you wanted to create as a blob and send it up as if it's a file, you could do that as well. Form data lets you do that. So all this now together, when I run it, 
when I click submit, you're going to see I'm doing a loop. There's a method called keys on the form data object, which creates an iterator. So you can use a for of loop to loop through all the values. Not a for in loop, but a for of loop will let you do this. So the key, that's going to be the names of each one of the form elements, as well as this one. And then the form data dot get, you pass in a key and it will give you the value for that one. All right. So we're going to be able to see everything written out. And then that is being sent as the body right here. I'm using the post method and I'm sending it off to the server. So back to the web page. When I fill this in, so we'll just type in some text, say Ricky Bobby, me at home.org, and just a password and the checkbox. When I click send, there we are. So that's the name. There's the value. Name, value, name, value, name, value, name, value. So this checkbox was called spam and the value is on. And then here's that API key that I added. And then here's the response that I got from the server. So it did go off. And if we look in the network tab, we'll be able to see, sure enough, there was the request and there's the form data that was being sent to the server. Okay, fantastic. So that all works. And really all it was, was these two lines right here. That got my entire form, everything inside of it, put it inside the form data. And then in my request object, I said, the body is going to be that variable. That's all it required. Now, sometimes the server is expecting something different. The server may be expecting data to be coming back as, or the server is going to be accept, accepting data, which is JSON instead of form data. So if that is the case, if you need to send JSON, that's okay. This is going to help us do that as well because it gives us this one object that we can predictably look at all the values inside. All we have to do is a couple lines of code to loop through it. So this is the same as the loop that we did up above, the for, the for of loop to console log everything. I'm just creating an object. I'm grabbing the object. I'm creating a property on the object with the same name as the key, and I'm setting its value equal to form data dot get this thing. So we're passing in the form data object, looping through it and returning an object. So I put this in its own function so I could call it right here. Now what I want to do is I'm going to put my JSON data inside of here. So I'm going to create a variable called JSON. And we're going to call our convert form data to JSON and we're going to pass in our FD object. Now this is an iterator. So that's considered to be asynchronous. So I'm going to say that we want to call this in an asynchronous way. We need to wait the response to come back from this. However, up here, to be able to use a wait, I'm going to add the async on here. All right. So just in case this does work in an asynchronous way and it does take a little bit of time, I don't want to fail getting this. So I've made my function asynchronous. Oh, sorry, not there. It goes in front. There we go. So an asynchronous function that lets us use a wait. So this will run, we'll get back the response and we'll put it inside of here. This is now my JSON object. Now I can either at this point, convert it from the object to a string, or we can do it right inside of here. We can take the object and say json.stringify that object, and that's what we're going to return. So either way, you can convert it to the string here. You can convert it to the string up here after you get the object back. So this is my JSON string that I'm passing in. Now, the one other thing that I do have to do is I have to tell the server, hey, I'm sending you some JSON data, which means we need the header. So let's say new headers and then h.append content type. We are going to be sending up application slash JSON. Yes, that's misspelled. There we go. 
Okay, we now have a header object with this one header added to it. So inside of here, and we can set the headers equal to that object that we just created. So now we're adding the headers. We've got the JSON data being sent. We can save that. And then this will work just the same. So we've got those and there we go. Okay. I'm because I'm using the different port number here and I'm not doing that in my server, I'm not addressing the fact that I'm doing that in the server. That's why I'm getting this course request. But the request was being sent to the server. And if we look in the network tab here, we actually should be able to see that. There we go. So that error has to do with the way I've got my server set up. But right here, here is that string. It is a JSON object with all of this data inside of it. So the request payload, it doesn't say form data anymore. The old version was saying form data. So this is my request payload. And in my request object content type application slash JSON. So I've, I've said that I'm sending JSON. Here is the JSON data that's being sent up. All right, and that's it. That is how you can use form data to quickly and easily grab everything from your form. So instead of having to have your function that runs when you submit and then individually say, okay, what was the name of that property? Okay, let's create a variable for, for that form input. Now let's create a variable for the next one and the next one and the next one. You grab all the values and then you do your validation. I can still do the validation here, but with the attributes that we can now add into forms like required, autocomplete being turned off so we don't have, um, so we're forcing the user to type it. So much can be done right in the HTML now to validate that the form is being filled in correctly. Like with the type equals email and required on this one. So for the email field, type is email and it's required. Because I did that, if I try to come in here, let's refresh this. If I try to come in here and do something like that, I click send, I get the message and the browser's doing this. I didn't have to write any script to do this. So with the built-in controls that you now have in HTML forms in the browsers, we can very quickly just grab all the values, bundle them together inside of our form data object, just like this. All right. Hope that helps you out. If you have any questions, feel free to leave those in the comments. And as always, thanks for watching.